Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Homo again. Hello, baby girl. How you doing? I miss you, and I'm dirty and, like, should have showered, but, like, I didn't shower because I had to watch Euphoria this morning before I left the house, and it's gross out here. Yeah, I did give her an assignment. I thought, you know, I think it's really fun when a show plays week to week and it's not like this all at once. I love to binge watch a show, but there is yeah. something exciting about having to wait a week. And then I thought like towards the end of this episode, we could recap our thoughts and feelings on episode two so that if you're not super into euphoria yourself, you can just breeze on by. Yeah. So, <laughs> well... I Oh, obviously we're at home again and it feels <laughs> never ending. I literally feel like I'm going nuts. So Yeah, you've been inside for a while. <sighs> 17 days. What are you doing? Like what are you N doing at home? Literally losing our minds. We feel like it's groundhog <laughs> like, day. Do are you doing puzzles? <sighs> like are you just sitting there and rolling around? Because you're so dramatic. Are you just no. huffing and puffing like, ah, for 24 well, hours a day? Ugh. You try staying at your inside of your house because I felt better for a week now. Well, I've been getting better and better every single day. I tested negative last Wednesday, the day that this podcast aired. But then Shane had never gotten tested. And so we got him tested because he was feeling really down in the dumps then. So I tested mm -hmm. negative and then Shane tested positive. And so Ugh. that was days after he had symptoms. He's going on day 12 or 13 like 11 or something and mm -hmm. still yesterday tested positive so we've had a really devastating go because well scream came out mm, he's missed opening weekend which is like all the fun like he really wanted to experience it in a theater with a crowd of people to yeah. feel the reactions and i get it it just is like I, I know there's much worse in the world. Like, thank God we're not hospitalized, that we're fine and, and doing well. But it is something. Yeah, that's your biggest woe is missing scream. <laughs> yeah, but it is something like it's not nothing. It's something that he had looked oh, forward to for, for two. And especially for him, it's like his favorite movie of all time. He's been looking forward to seeing this for two years. And then the timing is just that he's not able to see it. And it's just... I mean, it, it does, it sucks and it's hard to avoid. We can recreate any... the vibe though. We can what recreate the vibe. Like you I'll go to a theater with you guys and I'll go batshit crazy. Like I've never seen it. <laughs> well, the thing yeah! is like, like every he's... surprise moment I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> for real, I, te I got your I back. Tested, I tested negative on day 12. He's coming up on that. I think today or tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we finally got our hands on some at home tests. It's really hard and frustrating again like our problems are not huge problems we're doing okay we're not hospitalized like i know that we're at the very best case scenario for having coronavirus but <clears throat> it is just so confusing like the cdc put out their guidelines like five days after symptoms you can re-release into the world but like we just didn't feel like morally correct going to do that and then now then after 10 days he had still tested positive and we were like well with a positive test it's just not like morally sound we we finally had found the at-home tests they're gone everywhere <sighs> because i know that it's not uh, nice if you know that you have coronavirus to like go all of the time um, to and get expose tested. other people. Yay. So, yeah. But I think on day 12, he will go get tested again. Hopefully, it's negative and hopefully we can go see Scream. But I know that you lived your fantasy this weekend. Oh, you I was disappointed like by the audience I was with. They were like, dumb like I don't know what to say beyond that like there was like you I could feel there's moments where you like feel where it's like we should be going ape shit right now mm -hmm. and like crickets and I was like oh no <laughs> see so it would have been disappointing <laughs> it's opening weekend anyways. guys and I tried to tell so. Shane like when we went to the Spider-Man, like we went on the preview night, like it comes out on Wednesday yeah. and uh, <clears throat> people were just being so annoying, like chewing their food so loud, like just like oh, so annoying. And I, was, I like, had a Shane... great Spider-Man audience and it was like the weekend after opening and people were still like, oh my God, like guys were like gasping and like this was their scene. Mm. Oh, also screams beating uh, Spider-Man for debut weekend numbers, box office numbers. No, it's not. Yeah, with $30.6 million. Domestically. Their debut weekend. 
Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, the other thing I want to bring up is the elephant in the room. Like, all you fucking MCU psychos, like, my B, I didn't realize it was a cinematic universe. Like, sorry about it. My God, I said I don't care. Like, so well, no, fan. yeah, I didn't you know. Didn't I think the apology should be to me because you're only Well, you correcting... didn't know either, though. You backed down no. off that shit so fast. You were like, no, well, I didn't know. My <laughs> inclination was Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then you immediately oh, it was? Like, was like, bah! Yeah, that's what I said in the episode. And oh. that's why all the comments are then like, I'm sorry. Lizzie Ryland's right. I'm so sorry. A lot of, peop a lot of people I were like. I would like to watch playback, though, because I'm not sure you did say Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think you I... just said MCU. No, no, no. I, did you oh. use the word cinematic? I don't know. You've got that's me there. The, that's, yeah. <laughs> but maybe but you did. And this week I, we'll get more engagement because people are like, he did, Lizzie. Put enough of her. It's like, I don't care, guys. Well, At least I'm not bringing the mullet back like Bryce Hall. Let's focus on the real bad guys on the internet. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Before we get to that, I just want to say you should feel validated in that a lot of the comments were kind of passively saying, I hate that Ryland was right, but Lizzie. Oh, and no. So it just... They're it not felt taking like a bunch joy of MCU me being right. like citizens coming for me, like demanding I like I don't As know. They should. Whatever. Sorry. Sorry, I'm <laughs> not more sorry. Like I've seen all the movies, couldn't tell you much about most of them. <laughs> well, do you want to but tell yeah. us about your wild weekend? Um, I mean, <laughs> Sure. Let's talk about my wins. <laughs> Let's talk about my wins now that MCU is coming to fucking eat my butt. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I forgot about the Bryce Hall mullet thing. What do you mean when you say that? Oh, oh I just mean like Bryce Hall is like rocking a mullet as if it's socially acceptable. And now hella people are rocking mullets. And I'm just sort of like, I don't know, you guys. Like, is it like a little we were bit all cute? I'm really sure that was a bad. I don't think you should say that or suggest it. On well, our I don't even know what Bryce Hall looks like, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But I don't know. Maybe I feel like I've seen a version of a mullet recently, like on my Instagram Explore page, that was kind of cute. Like I feel like I is that something Machine I Gun mean, Kelly's doing? Oh, don't make me make the internet hate me more because I'm like is that, Machine Gun Kelly. I think he's so gross. Well, is that who's engaged to Megan Fox? Yes, it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i see the mullet you really got your finger on the pulse of pop culture baby <laughs> well that this who? week i have i have been feeling better with nothing to do so i mean i've tested negative so technically i can live my life although living right. with somebody that has tested positive i feel i still feel like that's like pushing the limits so i have yeah. nothing else to, whoa yeah these mullets are yeah it's a problem something 2022 mm. mullet let me see um okay so indulge us on your your lively weekend while i was sitting at home lizzie's <laughs> we get flaunting. it you've been doing nothing and it's awful for you <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ get a fucking puzzle play candy crush i don't know bro i feel like you're so dramatic you're like flopping around like fuck <laughs> try legos you know I was saying all of this to say that you were shoving in my face your fun. My life. So my not life. to be dramatic my on my end, but before I could even look at your location, Lizzie goes, I'm hiking and with a guy that's gay. Maybe I'll start a podcast with him. I'm like, okay, no, I get it. I didn't say maybe I'd start a podcast with him. You said, are you going to start a podcast with him? Okay. I didn't text you initially throwing that in your face, but I did feel bad when you were like, who are you with? I was like, oh, another handsome gay man. It did feel a little bit it it felt felt a little shady on my part, I will say. I'm so sorry about that. But it did start raining, so we hiked in the rain, which was like, I guess, kind of silly and romantic and fun. And then we went to La Pan Quotidian. Oh. I know. I took him to all our haunts, and I'm so sorry. Oh. Like, I feel really bad. She's just straight up replacing me. I was supposed no. to be there. And now that I can't be there, she's found a new gay man, everyone. <laughs> no, you're my only gay man. I uh -huh. love you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I'm, for you, baby. I'm stuck on the mullet thing. And I found one that I really think is no, actually kind of cute. Well, no, I think this Don't, one's cute. You can't. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> you can't be doing that. Our platform is too large for you to be advocating for mullets. <laughs> Don't. If I had the long, luscious hair to do so, I would. I would attempt. Why not? Should we go get you in? Uh, what are they called? Plugs? What are they? Um, 
extensions? Should we get uh, you yeah, mullet I, extensions? I've never, re well, not mullet extensions, just hair extensions in general. I did the most I could without getting the plugs. The plugs is just like a very invasive, involved, involved process while you're awake. You sit in a chair. Shut up. Looking down. Yes, I'm not kidding. Yeah. I went to, I don't remember his name, um, where all the celebrities go to get their new hairdos. Oh. And oh, okay. yeah, you sit face down looking at an iPad while they surgically remove a back piece of your head. They no. take that, they sew the back of your head back together, and then they take the hair follicles from the, pl the piece that they removed from your head and pluck them into your scalp while you're awake and it's a nine no. to ten hour process why are you awake i don't know i like <laughs> no there's idea. something in my throat right now I'm like I just and it's like <laughs> 40 grand don't mm -hmm. do that beauty but I do think is it'd be expensive fun if you... <laughs> and painful if you baby. wanted to go do an extreme makeover day i would love to make you into bryce hall and get you a mullet and take you shopping okay it could be fun, honestly. It. I think that'd be really funny. So Lizzie um, gets recognized quick... at LPQ. Oh, yeah. And then I got recognized at LPQ <laughs> by a very lovely young woman named Claudia. Claudia, shout out. You were a great waitress, by the way. I was nervous oh, when you... I didn't know that she was your waitress. Yeah, she was my waitress. So you went this whole time. And I was time. like, Rylan used to work here. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was fun it was exciting and then afterwards joel was like did you pay her to say that and i was <laughs> like no i did it i don't have that kind of money <laughs> um but yeah shout out claudia you were a great server honestly um it was a good time and uh jelly's thriving oh okay she's back in action yeah, she's screaming at us for all the foods that she wants in the world. She's running around. She's rearing her reindeer. She got three reindeer for Christmas, and so <laughs> she's, like, got to make sure they grow up like big, strong lady reindeers. Mm -hmm. And it's like nothing ever happened. I have no answers from any of the vets I've taken her to, and she's fine. Wow. I mean, yeah, take it. Yeah, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to run mm -hmm. with it and say that maybe she was just, like, sick, like, just regular sick. And then last night you went out and partied with the gays again. You went to West Hollywood. Oh yeah, but I don't think it was. I don't think it was like partying with well, the gays. You told me you were going to West Hollywood, so I thought you were going to the Abbey and like doing. No, no, no. A I just went to my her. friend's house. My oh, friend had yeah. a crafting night. Yeah, when you sent me a picture, I was like, "This looks very different from when I used to party in West Hollywood." <laughs> no, and no, what happened? You wearing night. the shirt. Oh, I was in a mad dash running out of the house and I didn't have mm. time. Like I didn't grab it to put it on over my sweatshirt, but it's a good shirt. And while I was crafting this guy, when I was leaving, he was like, hi, miss, like very respectful. He was like, I just, I just have to say your butt looks great. And I said, thank you so much. <laughs> it's that orange theory, butt. <laughs> it is. I said, I worked very hard on it. Did you tell him what you could do with that butt? No, I did not tell him what I could do with that butt because it felt inappropriate. Because <laughs> he so also said was... that he would take a bite out of it. And I was literally wearing the t-shirt that has the picture of my husband on the front of it. <laughs> and he was at this party the entire night. Yeah, Joe wasn't at the party. I know, but this man that was looking at your butt was? Yeah. And he's a man in West Hollywood that's looking at a woman's butt? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if it was like a, a, like a gay oh, party. Oh, okay, got it. So it might yeah. have been like a gay man. I'm sure man there were gays was... present, but this was not a gay man. Oh. This was a straight man who said he would take a bite out of my butt. <laughs> but also, like, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's awkward. It's weird talking about my wins while you've just been laying about for weeks on end. Discovering weird habits, might I add. You know how, like, Oh, what you have you discovered? A... Well, you know how you learned a lot about yourself in the first months of the pandemic and how you interact with those closest to you? Well, yeah. I was confronted head on with like something really strange that I do and I didn't even realize I was doing it and I thought it was super <laughs> casual. Shane walks into the kitchen the other day and I'm just like making my coffee and he goes, hey, uh, I'm just wondering like why you always have your underwear laying on the kitchen island. <laughs> Hold on. Did you just say you keep your underwear on the kitchen island? Yeah, like they're just always laying what, about. No, 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 no. What you, not laying about. Laying about <laughs> is on the floor. 
Are you you were putting your dirty panties on the kitchen island? Where, why are your dirty well, panties see, in the I kitchen? Thought there was nothing no, 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 wrong no, 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 no. Your bedroom's upstairs. There... Why are you taking your panties off in the kitchen? <laughs> exactly my problem. It's so far out of the way. When I, well, no, no, I'm no. Curious. Why are you taking your? I'm trying to tell you okay. because I'm a courteous citizen, and when I go to walk my dogs, I put panties on so I'm not flailing around the neighborhood with my dick yeah. out and in people's faces when they stop to talk to me. Thank you for so that. So when I get home, it feels very claustrophobic. You know I'm a no panties at home kind of guy. <laughs> You're the one always screaming this at me. And so I'm telling you to put panties on to go in public. I didn't realize it was awful for you to just wear panties generally. Well, yes. There's nothing I hate more than wearing panties. And oh, so honey. when I get home from walking the dogs, I take them off and I put them there. So the next time I'm walking up the stairs, I see them visually because they're not like dirty, dirty. They're like, I've worn them for 20 minutes. They just walks the dog dirty. Yeah. And so I, I leave them there to remind me to take them up the next time I go up the stairs. And Shane goes, well, yeah, but like, what if I put my sweaty, gross, disgusting underwear on the kitchen counter? Like, what do you, and yeah. that's what you're doing. And I yeah, was like, well, when, when you, mm, okay. And I really had yeah. to think for a second and realize that I was the villain in the story, putting my like right. gross, dirty underwear on the kitchen counter daily, like literally daily. You also have like the laundry room right there. I also that, like, that's what Shane there's suggested. Just so, <laughs> there's said, so many they're options. They're not dirty yet. I said they weren't dirty right. yet. You can so, also just go up the stairs and do it in your office. Like. You, and that's what so I've started many... to do I, because that's the closest right. room up the stairs. And so after wow. I was confronted with this head on, I realized I mm -hmm. should make some changes. And I've been going mm -hmm. up to my office to take off my panties. Great. And here we are. But then I remembered my current pet peeve with Shane in the kitchen, which just so yes. happens to be like if we do like takeout food and there happens to be a plastic utensil, it's not super often. But if he uses like a plastic spoon or something. He then finishes his dinner and puts the plastic utensil in the sink. And I always do the dishes. So I find it highly like, away. annoying that I'm like yeah. <laughs> doing all these dishes in a seat, not a seat, like one or two plastic utensils. I'm like, well, why are you putting plastic utensils in the sink? And he's like, well, Did I guess I never him? thought about oh. it. Yeah, I did. I, I confronted yeah. him and he was like, I guess I never thought about it, but lo and behold i woke up this morning to another plastic spoon in the sink so it's got to be like muscle memory at that point because i do some muscle memory things also like that right yeah it's just you don't think about it you just do it like my thing is like i'll put a knife in the sink and joe's like don't put knives in the sink because i'm gonna cut myself and it's like her sink's not that <laughs> full of shit that you can't open your eyes and look in and like not grab a blade is he digging his hands while looking out the window? I don't know what he's doing window? ever. That... I don't know what he's ever <laughs> doing. And it's like, we call him the honey badger at home and he acts like it's an offensive term. But it's like, if you don't want to be called a honey badger, don't act like a honey badger. <laughs> like, Wow. Girl to girl, because I'm a girl this girl. Don't act like a honey badger if you don't want to be called a honey badger, baby. I love you. <sighs> so do you want me to tell you about how I'm a famous actor again? Or are you over it? No, I've been wondering. You're, the text you sent, just tell your story. I mean, it's not really a story. It, a lot, aside from, so I wouldn't even say manifesting, but I've just been opening my minds to opportunities. One of my things How this year is- How about me wanting to write a Christmas movie and you saying, I don't know. <laughs> no, a Christmas no. movie catered to your famous actor quality needs. And you're Which like, I've been manifesting this thing, but like when it comes to turning my dreams into things, I'm going to leave it up to what's your fucking agent's name? Jeremy at fucking Tyler. Boot Scoot and Boogie. Tyler at Boot Scoot hey, and Boogie. Hey, don't be Agency. hating on Tyler. He's trying his best out there for me. But you know yeah, what? So how, is this, how is this a perfect opportunity for you, my famous actor friend? I gave you a direct route. We came up with a solution to execute on this Christmas movie. So what's the update? I know, I know, I know. I got to pull my... I, have, I could pitch you right now, but I don't think we should like spoil the plot for the audience. Yeah, we don't have a patent audience. on the concept. <laughs> so patent. I know I've been watching too much Shark Tank anyways so I just have found it interesting that my like 
I guess you could call it manifestation, but I am more so just saying I'm open to opportunities this year and opportunities come easy to me because I think when you think things into existence, (laughs) things come at you, but I don't think I was specific enough in what opportunities I was a quote unquote manifesting because the next day, like two things came towards me, but I just thought it's interesting that like acting. What were the things? Um, well, one was like a brand deal, which is good. I love, and when it's like a a good brand that I like working with, that's very fun. But then the other was in the same day, might I add, like the day before I was like, things come easy. It's a opportunity, whatever. I was being annoying. And then this acting audition. And I just was like, okay, maybe I need to get more specific with my manifestation because while I was the acting opportunity though, it's for a pretty good supporting role in what I think will be a very good movie. Like a, a very prominent comedian has written the movie. Um, oh, very cool. So it's a yes. comedy. Mm-hmm. Can you say yeah. who wrote it? Uh, who wrote I don't it? think so. I mean, Wait, I don't, I don't, why would I stick it my foot can? in my mouth before? Who wrote it? Are you doing the audition? Um, Who wrote it? I've, Tell me. Well, I've worked on the audition all week. It's due today. So right after this, I need to force Shane to be my reader. I almost thought about Fuck making yeah. you be my reader via FaceTime because Shane just hasn't been feeling great. Right. <sighs> but now it's down to the wire. But I think I've prepared myself well. But all this to say, it's like, it's funny to me. And I, the opportunity isn't it hasn't missed me. Like I am grateful right. for every opportunity and I do want to push myself to become a better actor, especially after watching euphoria. Honestly, doesn't that show make you want to be an actor? No, <laughs> I watched it and I think, fuck, that's so demoralizing. All these poor kids have to show their titties and like, I don't oh want to do God. that. Well, like we'll get to that in a second. I've never wanted yeah. to be an actor more after watching episode two of euphoria. You're so funny. <laughs> you're and I was like, so wow, these, funny these kids are talented they're really like i think it's the mix of all of the production anyways i just thought it's weird that like i can't get an unscripted agent to save my life i can't get like a right. hosting manager to save my life which is what i've been doing forever like for yeah. seven years i've been doing unscripted hosted pod like so much and i can't get somebody that is fighting on my behalf in any regards but i have somebody that's like jazzed up about me acting so i just think (laughs) life doesn't always come at you how you expect but you got to take the swings you know oh i'd be happy to read with you over facetime we just have to do it after my meeting i know you have a busy day and this audition's due at five so i had contemplate if shane won't i'm gonna have to call you i don't know we'll we'll have to see if schedule let me because i can make that work i can make that work okay so that's it I'm a famous actor. No big That's deal. That's so fun. Can you just tell me who the writer is or do you have to tell me off air? Well, I'm going to tell you off air because I don't want to go in and bleep it. It's not like I don't – there wasn't like a huge NDA with this one, but it's just still yeah. – I don't think I should be saying it out loud. Um, before we get into hot topics, we do have a sponsor for today's show. And it's a new sponsor to our show, which I'm so excited about because I've actually been utilizing their products and I love them. Today's episode is sponsored by Native. And for most people, the new year means rethinking how they take care of themselves. But Native makes it easy to switch to a personal care brand that makes all their products with simple ingredients. So Native cares about the products that you put on your body. They're all about stopping the stink the right way. And that's the Native difference. So native. I've been using the native deodorant. You, oh my gosh! I've been using native coconut deodorant. I smell fucking great, and I'm not terrified of the parabens and getting fucking aluminum in my fucking Mm -hmm. armpit titties. So native's coconut and vanilla scented (laughs) aluminum free deodorant has been a customer favorite for years, and now native is on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine. They create products that are made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil, so you can smell great all day long. Their deodorant checks checks a lot of boxes. Aluminum free, like Lizzie said, 24 hour odor protection zero residue on skin application and over 10 cents to cents to choose from so now is the time to treat I, yourself what sorry can i just add a couple things mm-hmm. it's in a cardboard case so you also don't have the anxiety of like oh god i'm contributing to like the plastic waste on the earth and the other thing mm-hmm. is like you said i go to orange theory every every day i've been wearing it under my armpits and previously i've been having issues with like my skin chafing and getting little bumps and rashes under there and since i've started using native i don't have that problem anymore and i actively smell good mm. which is very it, new for me <laughs> i'm wearing it right now i have the citrus one on and it smells delicious and they don't just have deodorants they have body wash bar soap toothpaste that is 
delicious shampoo conditioner and sunscreen everything you need to take your self-care to the next level so this is your personal uh so this year up your personal hygiene routine with native go to nativedo.com slash the sip or use promo code the sip at checkout and get 20 percent off your first order that's a great deal it's nativedo.com slash the sip or use promo code the sip at checkout for 20 percent off your first order oh i love that that's so exciting I like heard you talking about it. I was like, wait, I ain't wearing native. <laughs> no, it is a And great I used product. to just straight up not wear deodorant because I was scared of it. Uh, yes. And I then, yeah, I remember we had this conversation and we were like, you need to wear deodorant. So, oh. wait, no, we, you don't remember this text no, conversation? You backed yeah. me into that corner of telling you, you basically begged me to tell you that you need to wear deodorant. Do you think I'm smelly? Are you saying no, I don't, right now on the pot? But like before you're a audience. five day a week orange theory girl. Hmm. And I will say my six pack that was popping. I'm also bitter about this. I was on such a roll with orange theory yeah. and yoga. And for 17 days. God, I'm New so Year's sorry. Said, nope. Okay. Getting into hot topics. <laughs> I wanted to start with Kendall Jenner's inappropriate wedding attire. So she attended an influencer's wedding. <clears throat> I don't know who she is, but it was like this barely there, literally nothing dress cut out at all angles. Her nips probably popped out all throughout the yeah. evening. And I just thought, I mean, it obviously sparked a debate on Twitter, but should you upstage the bride or make the day about you or is everything fine and dandy? Do you think with this outfit? I mean, I don't think you should upstage the bride. I also, she, Kendall said she asked the bride's opinion and she was like, this is chill. So like, I, I don't know. think so there's the any harm out, there. The bride came out and said she loved it. And then Kendall yeah. said, um, she asked for approval, which I also think is kind of annoying because like, if you're oh, the bride, oh, so you wouldn't, you, when in the midst of planning a wedding, you don't care if there's all these people texting you outfit photos, asking you if it's appropriate for the day or not when you have like a wedding to plan. Well, I, that did happen to me and I didn't mind people asking me because it's like, they're asking because they want to be appropriate on my day. Like they want my day to be what I want it to be. So I do right. appreciate that. I appreciate someone sending me exactly what they want to wear and asking if it's cool. What I don't appreciate is someone asking me for examples of what they should wear. That's annoying. Right. Like and when they're like, what should I wear? It's like, I don't know, Tracy, what the fuck do you want to wear? What's your style? <laughs> what are you comfortable in? A fucking dress, dude? I don't know. Like whatever you want. <laughs> See, and I... We haven't executed our wedding because all of the attention on us sounds like a nightmare. So for me, somebody wearing something yeah. like this to my wedding, taking the attention off of me or the pressure off of everyone's eyes on me sounds yeah. wonderful, honestly. But I'm not a woman that or a man that has dreamt of his wedding his entire life. I just feel right. like if I was a, a girl or a boy that just had dreamt of my wedding forever, I would just say like, maybe not, especially when it's Kendall Jenner, who's already, no matter what she wears, she could wear a trash bag and she would still take the attention yeah. away from the bride because she's Kendall Jenner and she's at your wedding. Well, probably I thought, not in that group though. Like if what you're you in mean? a group with Kendall Jenner's and Haley Bieber's, like you're probably like, no, like that friend group is probably not going to be shocked to see another one of their friends there to the point of distraction. Well, Haley Bieber dressed very appropriately. Like she was still stunning, right. but I think she let the bride have her moment. I don't really care. So I don't know why I'm getting so fired up about this. I thought Kendall Jenner looked amazing. I just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, thought, I, I guess I don't think it's appropriate for her to upstage the bride, which I do think that I, she did a little bit. I mean, I hate all these dresses that are like basically bathing suits now anyways. And I'm just like, why do we have to do that? Like, like, why does everything have to be like a nudity moment? Why do we have to make nipples part of our outfits now? Like, <sighs> but I don't know. I'm like wearing oversized pants and a sweater right now. So I don't know shit about fashion, <laughs> but I'm sick of it. I want to like, can we just be comfortable? Cause she's probably not comfortable. None of that no. shit's comfortable. Kendall there Jenner has never looked around. comfortable. No, and there was something going around on the internet where Kim Kardashian was, like, wearing one of those, like, leather bodysuits, and she's like, if I have to go to the bathroom and my sister can't help me, I'll just pee my pants. <laughs> and she meant it. And it's like, girl, why? Don't do that. It's the price of being that. a Kardashian. That's insanity. They're selling but the But honestly, fantasy, I'd piss baby. my pants to be a billionaire, too. And I piss my pants for free right now, so what the fuck do I know? <laughs> 
I'm a fucking okay. idiot. <laughs> Did you want to talk about cheer? Because this is your headline. Do I want to talk about cheer? <laughs> Yeah, I do. Well, I was more so interested in your tagline. What was it? Oh, call the plastic surgeon. I need jaw reconstructive surgery because this shit is broken from the dropping of it. Oh, not even one of them them has a sickening jaw. Uh, No, no, no. It's because my jaw dropped at every fucking moment. I don't want to spoil the series for anyone because it is a very engaging ride all the way through. But it ruined my week last week. I couldn't what? do work and t- I couldn't do work until I finished it. And it's like hours of content. See, so I feel so days. left out. I couldn't get into the first season. Every like it was oh. all the rage last year and yeah. I I didn't give it enough of a try, but I just like it didn't immediately capture me. So I right. ha- I feel I feel like I've missed the train. You did screen text me it, about it, the girls wearing Shane's merch. <laughs> Oh, yeah, hella girls are wearing Shane's and boys are wearing Shane's merch in it. And it was like, I felt like I was cool by proxy. See, so that was really sick. I also was a cheerleader in high school, but I was a really bad cheerleader. And I only did cheer because I'm of the generation that grew up seeing Bring It On in movie theaters. So, like, mm. our whole idea of, like, our high school fantasy of cool girl shit is based off of, like, cool girl cheerleaders. And I think that there's, like, a huge group of people like me who were, like, a cheerleader, but our team was just really fucking bad. And we were just all there for the uniform and the bow and the cheer camp experience. And it's, and like, boys. we wanted to be part of the gang, but our gang sucked. <laughs> like, So I love it for that reason. Um, and it's fun to watch specifically talented people do what they do because they're incredible athletes. And not only that, but the, the perseverance and the work ethic – that the coach Monica has and all of the effort that goes into it and the passion and the love of all of these athletes is it it makes me excited to do what I do. It makes me want to work harder at what I do. So I find it very inspirational. And then my God, Ryland, the drama, (laughs) (laughs) the drama. (laughs) Does it feel real or does it feel scripted? It feels real. It feels very real, which is, which also is like another reason why like my jaws on the ground, like, There's been a lot of public drama about the cast of the first season since it came out Mm -hmm. and like literally lives have changed and been ruined. There's a lot of stuff going on in that realm and they, instead of trying to hide it and pull a curtain over it in this current season, they talk about it face on. They bring it. and, And I think that's incredibly brave and really, uh, cool of these people to share their experience and their stories so frankly um and then you know again like i'm not i don't want to spoil anything and i don't want to talk about anything for those of us that have yet to enjoy the season but we also get to meet their uh years old rival college and who they are constantly going head to head with at uh competitions and we get to see how hungry they are for a win after losing for 14 years Mm. And we get to hear those kids' stories and we get to see their passion. And then not only that, but they started filming this before coronavirus hit. So we get to see their response to coronavirus. Like we get to watch some people, you know, who have put their entire lives into this thing. And they really, Rylan, only get two years of this kind of extreme sport. And then after that, there's nowhere for them to go. And how coronavirus impacted that. It's like, it's wild. It's wild. I was wow. watching it and I just was like screaming. <laughs> I needed, I, <laughs> I had told Joe I was going to make cookies and I brought the cookie dough to the couch and I was like making my cookie dough at the couch, just going, no, no. <laughs> like every five seconds, like Jelly was like, what's wrong, mama? And Bubs was like, don't hurt me. And I was like, are you watching this? But I was See, watching with my I- friend Kate <clears throat> on the text. I love cheerleading. So I'm going to jump into that for sure. And we'll report back. The yeah, Oscars... I- are, or do you have something else to say? Well, no, I was just going to say, like, I'm going to reveal a little something. Okay. I just wrote an entire TV show about cheerleading. Oh, and this was prior to the second season even dropping. Right. So I just finished that, a draft of that pilot and then watched this, and I was like, oh, my God. So I'm, really, <laughs> I'm way more excited about that project now. Anyways, moving on. Oscars. Okay. So the Oscars are on this year. 
uh, there are multiple hosts being speculated, and I was just wondering what it would take for you to watch the world's most most boring hour, three hours of television, because the Oscars Probably are a JoJo Siwa. JoJo Siwa. Really? JoJo Siwa, JoJo Siwa, JoJo Siwa. <laughs> You, you know, I would tune bring in. me to any I'd, tables, Jojo Siwa, Stormy I'd Webster, honestly Jojo Siwa. Tune in for that. I think they need to cut. I heard somebody else say this, but I do think they need to cut like half the categories, make it an hour long show. No, really you can't cut the categories. You can't cut. Okay, the we categories. don't need to cut them, but can they be like you know, like the Grammys? They do like fifty categories before the show even airs. And no, because like, I've never still... watched the fucking Grammys either. Well, so because Jojo Siwa hosts... never hosted the Grammys either. Honestly, that seems like the best fit in the world. Like so the Oscars, she's not really. I mean, she's not not an actress, but she definitely fits more into in she line might with not the, be hosting an actress. the I'll say that as a huge JoJo Siwa <laughs> fan who's seen all of her content, she might not be an actress. <laughs> okay, so speculate in speculation are Pete Davidson, who has had informal conversations, his team and the people that are producing the Oscars, but it's likely not to happen. Mm-hmm. And. No thoughts on that? I, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, Pete Davidson has a huge following. Some would liken it to the MCU-verse, and I'm not trying to catch any heat from Pete Davidson's uh, Army. mommies. Yeah, well, I the shit was out of me. <laughs> looking the other day, um, and I don't know if you, I, this might be a moment, like when I said Rihanna doesn't have an Instagram and I just didn't know it was bad girl Riri instead of Rihanna. Um, but I couldn't find Pete Davidson's Instagram. So like he's super Did you famous. Did Pete Davidson in? Yeah. And I found some fan accounts, but the fan accounts weren't tagging his real account. So I don't know. Oh, I don't think he does have social media. Interesting to be so famous without social media. Jennifer Lawrence doesn't have it either. Yeah, but she. I feel like Pete Davidson. I know he's an actor, but he feels more like a personality to me. Like I feel like you he's know a who comic. he is. Which yeah, and Jennifer Lawrence. I also heard her next movie is going to be uh, portraying Elizabeth Holmes, which I'm very excited about. Is that, <laughs> no, I thought that was Amanda Seyfried or whatever. I heard it was Jennifer Lawrence. Both could be good picks. Uh, I think, mm, who knows? Um, Tom and Zendaya. No, I think both are great, but I need to know. Okay. I need to know. Um, they've said that... Adam um, McKay's Bad Blood movie starring Jennifer. Mm. Sick. Oh, Adam McKay's doing it? It's going to be funny. Even yeah. though I didn't love Don't Look Up, I think that is going to be so funny. I enjoyed oh, Don't wait, Look I'm Up. wait, I'm dying with excitement. What? what? <laughs> I said I enjoyed Don't Look Up. I thought it was... You did? I thought Ariana was great in it, you know? like Oh, Ari's so good. She's I a would... talented actress. She's talented at everything. It's yeah, like she, she, re- she can sing, like, so well. I watched, like, a little <laughs> clip on Netflix's YouTube channel of Ariana talking about, like, her inside of that movie. And I was just like, God damn, it should be illegal to be so talented. Yeah. It really she's should. Great. It's not. It doesn't feel fair. No, and she's really funny. <laughs> like, there's a, and she's like a good person, I guess, behind closed you doors. Guess. I don't know. Okay. I don't know her personally. So Tom but, yeah. Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. I don't know where the fuck that came from, but that is the most random thing I've heard. What do you mean, Tom and Zendaya hosting the Oscars? No, Tom Hiddleston or whatever. Oh, oh I, I meant, can't even say oh, his name. No, Loki. no, 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 no what's you mean tom holland yes oh my gosh why do you yeah. think tom holland and zendaya well they're being heavily rumored the internet and oh, he said on jimmy kimmel he said if they asked me i would love to um but i although i don't know if spider-man's going to be a contender for an, the oscars it is like the biggest blockbuster of the year and i think that is a draw that like i think you and i would probably both watch if tom and zendaya oh for the sure oscars. i'm upset obsessed with tom and zendaya i am obsessed with those two i would watch i would watch for them too um then, but for sure jojo siwa <laughs> the most the most recent and last that i'm going to touch on is uh the cast of um what's that Only show murders. selena gomez yes selena gomez steve martin i do love steve martin <laughs> And I think Selena Gomez is probably a really good person to be friends with, but I don't know that her energy level is exciting enough for me to watch her host a three hour show that I don't want to see. Right. So Tom and Zendaya for the win. You and I, 
us millennials will tune in for the two of them. I mean, honestly, I might even miss that. Just wow. because there it's the show is so not about okay, those miss, people. Don't like cut I feel like- categories. No, but I mean like I give a shit about those categories being awarded. Mm. And I think it's just respectful to cut them to the craft and to the to the masters of their fields that have put their blood, sweat, and tears into these sick ass films. Right. But I also don't give a rat's ass about an awards show. Mm. Yeah. It's- yeah, unless I'm there getting the free food and a swag bag. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, you added Bradley I feel like Cooper. back in the day, they were a little bit more exciting, though. Like, when they, the big musical numbers that they used to do. Like, the last one I really, really remember was when South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut had a huge musical number at the Oscars that year. And mm. that was, like, the last thing I really remember seeing and thinking, like, oh, that's sick. I was also, like, 10. Right. Whatever. Moving on. <laughs> okay, do you want to recap Euphoria, or did you want to hit on Bradley Cooper that you had added to the document? Oh, I just think it's fucking wild that Bradley Cooper did a full frontal nude scene in Nightmare Alley, and that he was just had his dick flopping around on set for six hours to do it. Like, did he what? really? Yeah, I just saw that in an article on People. I saw he, that. So he just well, had no, his dick out. I heard him talking about that on a podcast that I listened to. But then I went to Google it just to see if it was real. And all that came up on Google was him in like a sheer cheetah print, uh, like short underwear. So I don't know if the internet just hasn't gotten a hold of it yet. Or is the movie out? I don't even know. I honestly hadn't even heard of the movie, but I heard about the dick in the full frontal, which Hmm. I just think is crazy. Yeah, that is shocking that he, yeah. Yeah. And then this also reminds me um, in Don't Look Up, I wasn't watching very closely but apparently there's a scene where they depict meryl streep as nude oh yes at the very end so apparently well factually that is not her nude body that is a body double oh but leonardo dicaprio called adam mckay and said i don't feel comfortable with you even using a body double to depict meryl nude because she is hollywood royalty and it is disrespectful so I think it's pretty interesting that Leo would call in and say, like, we need to, you know, protect the queen, which is Meryl Streep. I mean, and it still made it then, into the film. I mean, she can it fight did, her but own I mean, you can battles, make, it, right? Exactly. I just thought, yeah, of course. If she didn't want to do it, it would never have happened. Yeah, she's Meryl Streep. I feel like yeah. she... She's probably, I mean, definitely fine with it. I feel like Meryl Streep could have filmed oh, the whole movie and she then does said, it... never mind, and they'd have to cut it. yeah. Literally. And the other thing that I think is really funny, sorry to keep going back to Don't Look Up, but uh, Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence was doing a press docket, and in one of her interviews, she said that they all call Meryl the goat, mm-hmm. and they call it to her face, like, oh, the goat, like, here's the goat, like, make room for the goat. And one time, Meryl was like, I'm just, I'm just an old goat. <laughs> and Jennifer was like, Meryl, what do you think that means? She's like, like, I'm old, like I'm an old goat. And she's like, no, it, it means greatest of all time. I'm like, no one's calling you a goat. <laughs> but I love that. I also can't believe Bradley Cooper has his dick out for six hours on set. What a nightmare. Well, yeah, I'm very interested to see the scene or the photographs from the scene, you know? <laughs> I'm sure you are. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, you're the one that put it into the document, not me. No, I know, I know, I know. <clears throat> okay it just seems Euphoria. like a nightmare like my nightmare is being naked in front of a fucking crew forever <laughs> like god i did an implied nudity scene one time and i put like hot orange tape over my nipples because i was oh like mortified like i wouldn't even be like fake naked and i had like pants on in the shower and i was <laughs> okay let's get to the chicago stormy birthday party before we jump we yes. can end with the euphoria recap good call good call some people don't love 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 Right, right, right. Okay, so Chicago and Stormy had a dual party. And yes. at this party, I think there are two super notable things. The first of which is Kylie taking photos in her hot pink bodysuit, shut down the rumors that she's already given birth to her second baby. Have you heard mm-hmm. that rumor? Yes, but then so I saw a pe- picture circulating from far away that didn't have the belly or it was that was a picture of kim kardashian not kylie oh so they were both in matching pink suits well they're different shades of pink kim's was hot hot pink 
Okay. Kylie's was a softer pink, <laughs> and she was wearing a trench coat. And I Kylie's was a full work. body suit. It's important to note the details, guys. It's a, I know. And also, I saw the faraway picture. It's very clearly Kim Kardashian, you silly geese. All right. Anywho. <laughs> Then the second thing is that Ye went on his Instagram live and was like, oh that trifling God. hussy Kim won't let me know where my baby party is. And then he was at the baby's party and like being quote unquote, as all the tabloids are saying, like a doting father. And I'm seeing these videos of him like picking up Chicago and like you hold, holding her and like sort of thrusting her at this pinata while she holds a stick. And part of me is like, this is a weird expression of doting fatherhood. Like is. Well, he's Chicago, on a very... the stick with your with which you're beating a piñata because like that's a weird choice, my dude. He's yeah, I mean he's on a very weird, I guess you could call it press tour, like yeah, he's doing something. I don't know if maybe he really wasn't like wanted at the party and then it wasn't until he threw his uh Instagram story out there that yeah. he did get invited, but I, I think some article I read said, oh, she, Kim had the party for the first half of the day. Then Kanye yeah. had the second half of the day after 4 p.m. But it's just all very weird. And I mean, he's, it's... Also, he's also doing, he dropped the diss track. Did you hear that? Of course I heard that. Of course. Of course I heard that. Where he said the and nannies the raised the kids it's... and that he wants to fight Pete yeah. Davidson. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like all of it is like this avant-garde sort of cultural art piece that he's doing. Like, that's at least what I hope, because for some reason I've put Kanye intellectually on a pedestal. And when he does shit like this, I'm like, oh, this is so dumb. <laughs> like, is he being dumb as an art piece? Because I, like, don't think he's that dumb, but it's like, maybe he's dumb. <laughs> this, I just this is hope, dumb. I mean, it's... The art is real people's lives, so and we don't actually know yeah. anything. Like we're speculating right. from afar with information that we have that probably isn't even true. And yeah. I mean, any separation is devastating and hard and probably tricky to navigate. What I find um, very fascinating is his ongoing publicity relationship with Julia Fox. I mean, there's yeah. like all these headlines out saying that he's. Um, controlling her um, similar to w the way that he did with Kim, Kim and yeah. like demanding the way that their house be and what she wears and what she shows and what she can't show. And she's doing all this press about it. And they're like being very public, like every move is being documented for the world. And in an interview, she said, I'm a good candidate for the position because I don't Girl, read what? comments. And so she's not even saying this is like a relationship. She's saying it's, it's a job a position. And so it's just, it, it, yeah. it really blows my mind, but I have to think that this is all calculated on, on their end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you also want to talk about hot sauce gate? I mean, we can quickly touch on this. <laughs> I don't want to touch it at all. <laughs> Especially well, is it, it's very hoo -hoo. old by now. I think everyone knows it's about it, and now. it's old. Yeah. But if you if you have anything that you really want to, um, any standouts from it? Oh, I just I just think flush your condoms. Right, everyone's saying that, but it's also like good for you, Drake. Because yeah. honestly, like I'm the type of petty where it's like, oh, you're trying to steal my ejaculate. Enjoy this hot sauce in your. Also, here's something. What color is the hot sauce? Like, how dumb is this woman <laughs> that she's literally picking up a condom that's got the color of hot sauce in it? Okay, or are anyone... you not looking? Like, are the lights off? Like, what's the deal, bitch? Like, are you? Uh... you so, for anyone I... that doesn't know, fucking... Drake hooked up with a model, and afterwards yeah. he put hot sauce in the condom, and then she trying to trying conceive to his child her, right Ronnie. put it in her but she, then there was hot sauce yeah. in it it's, it's and a then nightmare. she sued him which she is crazy yeah. <laughs> and it's it's which is like why we know about it yeah somebody like me would flush it but drake is a rapper he's on a yeah. higher level he would put hot sauce in the condom yeah good for him yeah uh okay let's round this episode out with our euphoria season two episode two uh recap well i don't even really have a recap i just have some thoughts Let's hear him, girl. Well, first of all, I want to be a girl so that I can play Maddie's character. Like, what? her floating in the pool 
talking on the cell phone while babysitting at this mansion. Like, I just love the outfits they put her in. I think she has the most fun character to play because she's so traumatized, but she is glamorous and she's like yeah, troubled. She's wild. But it's it, like I want to. I want to be that actress. I want to play Maddie. The, I want to do a video where I dress up. Like, you know, uh, when Euphoria first came out, everyone was yeah. doing videos of, like, dressing like the Euphoria cast. I want to do a video where I dress like Maddie from Euphoria. <laughs> do it. And Cute. my other thought is that I'm in love uh, with Cassie, the actress. Um, oh, I she's lovable. I, I think she's made me straight. Yeah. I'm so jealous. I'm so in love with her. I think she's I get it. Just we like, get it. We heard you the first she, time. She, don't you think she's so just mesmerizing, like her big, huge eyes? And I think she's a really. I think she's a very talented actress, and I mm. think she has very good titties. Mm, very good titties and really good skin and mm-hmm. beautiful hair. Um, but yeah, no, I think she's incredible. I think she's yeah. great. Camera loves that girl. Yeah, I mean, what I really like about this show is it's, like, plot light and character heavy. So, Mm -hmm. like, these episodes are about what these characters are going through. And I actually tend to think that at times it's underdeveloped content-wise and hyper-developed production-wise. Oh, right. Like, the production's, like, super elaborate, but the script itself is, like, meh. And then this episode that we saw with the cat characters bedroom scene, I was like, oh, this is elevated. This is great. This is a really smart scene where they're showing the pressures of society when society is trying to say that their objective is to remove pressure. Like it's just such Mm -hmm. an interesting dichotomy and the way that they showed that visually with all of the women popping up in cat's room and screaming at her. Right was brilliant and also i know the guy that plays her conqueror fantasy viking man <laughs> really that's brock yeah <laughs> brock and was I don't in think a movie that, was that me penis. and joe and james worked on no it's not none of the apparently none of them are real penises except for that guy who took a shit no, in the shitting on the toilet one. yeah that one looked very yeah. real the other ones you can tell they're fake yeah um <laughs> did you watch the after the episode I don't get the after the episodes because it's on, I'm watching it on my app, which is why I don't have access to it on Sunday. I have to, I only have access to it on Monday. You don't have HBO Max? My HBO Max app didn't have it yesterday either. Weird. Um, yeah. Yeah, because they do like – in. I really like their um, – because you can tell they do these like nine-minute interviews with different cast members with Sam, the creator, and the actors. And I, you're right. Like maybe the storyline isn't all there, but they're really – Um, He's talking individually with each character about how everything would make the characters feel. And it seems like they have hours of discussions for each person and how XXX would make them feel. Um, And then, like, visually, it's just captivating, which is why I think it's so fun. And I do see more people on Instagram, like, showing that they're watching Euphoria than any other show. So I think it's cool that they've been able to create an event out of a television show, which I don't think we've had in a long time because everything's so, like, here's everything at once, have a great time, which is fun. Well, Yellowstone and 1883 are also giving us weekly goodies, and so are Yellow Jackets, and a lot of people are obsessed with Yellow Jackets. I've been watching it. The pilot episode was directed by my favorite director, Karen Kasuma. And I saw even people in our comments talking about how fantastic it is. So I'm going to maybe start that as well. So here's the thing. I'm watching every episode of yellow jackets and I am so disappointed. Really? And they have such a brilliant cast, but it's like in a world where euphoria is on HBO and this is a showtime show and you can tell they've spared no expense. It feels a lot like old TV to me. Sometimes the scripts and the, visual storytelling feel a little bit like a cw show honestly i feel bad Mm -hmm. saying it but it does there are like some scenes where it's like there's a a politician character in the present day and scenes between her and her wife sometimes are shot and it feels like oh i could be watching this on cbs or abc right now like it feels a little revengey like that old show revenge as opposed Mm -hmm. to like a beautiful show on showtime where they've spent all this money on these locations and then they also are doing like 
uh, mature content. So there's a lot of gore in it, which is sick. And like the gore effects are practical and they're fucking epic. Like they're really, really good. And then they're, and then they'll have a scene where all the kids are like tripping on drugs, but it's like, as a person who's done these drugs, I know that that's not what a trip looks like on those drugs. Right. And I feel like that Do you feel really like they're more accurately out. portrayed in Euphoria? Um, the drugs in Euphoria are there. It's almost like when they're showing a trip in Euphoria, they're showing an analogy for it, and the analogy yeah. feels appropriate. Or they're showing a metaphor for it, and the metaphor feels appropriate. This mm. is in uh, Yellow Jackets. They're showing the physical trip as it would be experienced by a person who's taken the drug, and it's right. wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> in my opinion, in my opinion, I know right, that everybody's right, right. drug experience is subjective, but it's like from easy writer to today, people have depicted drugs accurately on screen. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm a stickler for it. I don't always follow my own rules when it comes to drug use, because sometimes I do think some things are funny. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously you can't do much physically in a K-hole, but sometimes I'd like to see a character try to do something in a K-hole because I think the attempt is hysterical. <laughs> as it's so impossible i don't know whatever i was irritated by one of the episodes and it's like it's such a slow burn that part of me is like i don't care okay. but i'm watching it <laughs> well i think and that's all the where... actresses on it are so strong and i love well now love you haven't told me on it i don't think i'm gonna start watching it so no you should watch it because i'm the only full. person no i'm literally the only person who feels this way everybody else is like obsessed with the show Bold so I'm the loser. Out. I know. All right. I know. Well, but, you know, that's... I already took on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So come get me, mm. Yellow Jackets. All right, you guys. Bzz. That's where we're going to leave you for today. I hope you had a great time. And maybe one day we'll be back together. You never know. Here's to hope. What do you mean? What do you do? Why are you being so cryptic? Of course we'll be back together. We'll be back no. together next week. <laughs> I mean, even hopeful. after... Yes. Okay. Here's to our hopes, wishes, and prayers. But I think we found, I mean, I'm not saying this is um, ideal, but I think for a virtual setup, this is very good. We've it's fine. Found, we found Your our face footing. looks like it's been run over a cheese grater. I just took a picture to send you. Oh, thank you. All right, you guys, if you want to follow us on social media, we're at The Sip Official. We're also on there personally. Um, I should have another vlog coming out this week. We just like, you know, it's from before we had gotten sick. And then hopefully I, we never intended to take such a long break. But yet here we are. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and enjoying our show and supporting our show. We love you very much. Goodbye. And that's the and sip. And that's the sip.